Noise Repellent is an open source noise removal plugin that can be used to reduce noise of your audio signals in real time in hosts like Ardor or Carla. It can also be abused for creative effects. I'm gonna show you all of that in this video. Hey, I'm Anfa. I'm an electronic music producer and sound designer, but I only use free and open source software and Linux. Noise Repellent is a free and open source audio processing plugin available for Linux in the LV2 format that's performing spectral denoising in real time, though it introduces about 30 milliseconds of latency, depending on the sample rate you use. In this video, I'm going to show you everything about it. At first, I'm going to show you the very basic um, way of using the plugin, which is just to turn it on and let it do its thing completely automatically. And after that, I'm going to show you how you can tweak the different parameters, what do they mean, how do they affect the sound, and in the end, we're going to abuse the plugin to create some interesting sounds uh, for music production. Let me show you the website of it. You can find the plugin's source code as well as binary downloads on GitHub. The link will be in the video description. And apart from a very nice description and instructions how you can install it, there is also a fantastic wiki page where you can read how to use this plugin and how to get the best results. So I highly recommend that as further reading after you watch this video if you feel like you need to up your noise removal game. Okay, let's first listen to some samples. The first and the simplest way you can use this plugin is by just enabling the automatic mode. I'm gonna play you a bit of sound that I've recorded using this microphone uh, in the original form and after that with the automatic noise removal on and then we're gonna tweak it a bit. Uh, this is what you normally record if you um, make the microphone face the other way, the other direction and then that's a little bit of speech right there. And now I'm going to enable this plugin, open its interface, and I'm going to show you what's there. It's set to Adaptive Noise Learn. I've also tweaked the settings a little bit, and I'm going to play you how it sounds after I've tweaked it, but it's still using the Adaptive Noise Learn to automatically detect the noise background and remove it as much as possible. Uh, this is what you normally record if you um, make the microphone face the other way. The other I'll bypass it now. It's pointed into a ball. Uh, you're not talking very, 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 very loudly, and you're just um, yeah. There's lots bypass. Of people, like background noise. Uh, On. <clears throat> so you can see that the noise removal isn't perfect by any means, but it's. Definitely doing quite a lot to the sound. We can try some other sections. You, you talk a bit louder and uh, let's see if the noise adapts, like the noise reduction can adapt to that. Or, um, yeah, like, uh, or what if I, what if I reduction? get up and uh, get into a corner of the room and start talking to in the microphone from far away and there's some uh, bypass. More, more noise. Noise reduction. Maybe it's a bit different noise. Yeah, could be. Bypass. Uh, I can start noise reduction. Really so you can see there's quite a lot of noise in there, and even the adaptive uh, noise learn mode, which is, by the way, tweaked for speech, so it, it's not going to work this good, possibly on different sounds like, you know, a guitar or piano. Um, it's doing a pretty good job at, like, separating our noise background from the speech foreground. Let's reset this plugin to absolute zero. Now let's also trigger this reset noise profile you, you thing so that it has no idea what the noise is. If you enable the adaptive noise learn, the plugin will try to separate the louder parts of the sound that it's, that it's hearing from the quieter parts. And it's going to use the quieter parts to build a spectral profile, basically a frequency plot of what the noise is like in the recording. And then it's going to subtract that from the spectrum of the sound to try and remove the noise. Uh, this is what you normally record if you um, make the microphone face the other way, the other direction, and it's pointed into a ball. Uh, 
I'm not talking very quiet. Now it's bypass. You can see that even this automatic adaptive noise learn with no prior knowledge to what the noise is going to be like, pretty fast, it's managed to correctly separate the noise background from the speech on the foreground and reduce our noise. Of course, it's not artifact free. We can hear that it's been denoised, but it's still better. <laughs> Now let's go into the fully manual mode, which is how I use this plugin most of the time. I have recorded this piece of speech here. I'm going to play it to you without denoising. This is only after a compressor so that the volume levels are more consistent. It also makes it harder to denoise, actually. Here's some noisy speech recorded from far away. Needs cleanup to sound okay. Yay. As you can hear, there is a lot of noise in here. Now, let me play to you how does it sound with noise repellent enabled, uh, trained on the noise sample from this recording and tweaked by repetitive listening and deciding what sounds best. Here's some noisy speech recorded from far away. Needs cleanup to sound okay. Yay. Uh, there's practically zero noise in here. And yes, we do have quite a lot of artifacts and you can tell that it sounds like a very low quality audio file, but you can't hear the noise at all. It's, it's really a drastic change. Here's some noisy speech recorded from far away. Needs cleanup to sound okay. As you can hear, we're losing quite a lot of high frequencies in here. I'm gonna show you how to make the plugin learn a specific noise. In this manual mode, what you need to do Let's, I'm going to clearly click Reset reset Noise Profile. Now, the manual of the plugin says that you should loop a section of just the background noise. No briefs, no clicks, nothing like that. Now, there's quite a lot of clicks and, and hiss and then other stuff here. How about this thing? All right, this is a, a section that is pretty much just the noise. It's very short though. I'm going to loop it and let the noise repellent plugin listen to it continuously to build its spectral profile. So you've noticed that as soon as I disabled the learn noise profile toggle, the sound went completely silent. And that's because we have already set the, the noise reduction to a very, very strong 48 decibels of attenuation. However, let's now play this sample. Here's some noisy speech recorded from far away. I think the results are a little bit better because before I used this section with the clicks and stuff and that confused it a little bit. So now it has a better profile of the noise and it can remove it with more accuracy, which is cool. All right, uh, let's figure out what all these parameters do, shall we? I'm going to reset the plugin to its basic state. So now we're using the previously learned noise sample, which was somewhere here. Here's some. And these are the default settings. So you can hear there's quite a lot of artifacts. We have a few controls here. Reduction amount is how much the noise profile is being subtracted from the sound. If it's at zero, there is no noise reduction taking place. If we go all the way. Here's some noisy speech recorded from far away. We're trying to attenuate the noise to the maximum. However, um, this, the volume of the sound also plays a big role. And this is controlled by the threshold uh, offset. Basically, this determines the sensitivity of our noise reduction. So even with reduction amount at 48 decibels, which is the maximum, there's still some stuff coming through. And if I want to cut this off completely, I can change the thresholds offset to rise the threshold so that all the noise falls under the threshold and none of it stays above the threshold. Let me show you. Here's some noisy speech recorded from far away. Needs cleanup to sound okay. As you can hear, the little twinkies, twinkles and chimey, noisy artifacts are going away when I rise the threshold. Here's some noisy speech recorded from far away. Needs clean. But I can also lower it. Here's some noisy speech recorded from far away. Now, 
the best results are often achieved when you do just a little bit of noise reduction um, because, um, well, it's usually it's not a good idea to r try and remove the noise altogether because it's going to give you maximum artifacts and often you just need to find a good balance between less noise, more artifacts and like decide where is the point that gives you the most benefit. Sometimes you can get away with more artifacts if you're going to process the sound like add some reverb or some other stuff or if the sound is going to be quieter in the mix. But if the sound is going to be front and center, you might want to have a little bit more of noise even and less artifacts because noise is a very natural thing and we're very used to hearing noise, but we're not used to hearing these spectral subtraction artifacts. However, noise repellent has quite a few interesting tools and dials that you can tweak to minimize these artifacts. And let's talk about these now. There is release. And if it's at zero... Here's some noisy speech recorded from far away. Okay, let me raise the reduction amount. Here's some noisy speech recorded from far away. As you can hear, we have a lot of, um, like these twink twinkling artifacts. Here's some noisy speech recorded from far away. Needs you know, we have like these little, like every frequency band in the signal has a little noise gate on it. And if the release time is too short, they're going to constantly like disable, disengage and engage, letting through tiny tones, tiny little chimey noises. And if we increase the release time, they're going to be calmed down. So they are, they, they are not going to react as fast. So basically when... Uh, when our signal is below the threshold of our noise profile, the gates are engaged. And when there is voice coming through, which is louder, and it like crosses the threshold, the gates disengage. And they disengage with the release time. The longer the release time, the slower they're going to disengage. So let me play this to you now at the maximum release time of one second. Here's some noisy speech recorded from far away. It's making the noise uh, reduction much stronger because the the noise reduction is still like suppressing the noise even though there is loud signal that should be let through. And and it is, but there's more noise reduction. If we turn the release down. Here's some noisy speech recorded from far away. It also kind of smooshes our transients a little bit. Like there's not much of it here, so we can't hear it that well, but I have another sample where we can test that specific thing. A very cool feature of this plugin is that you can listen to what the noise repellent plugin is removing. If we go to residual listen and enable that. Now we are hearing only what is being rejected by the spectral subtraction algorithm. And it's also a nice tool for creative reasons because you can use that to make some really crazy sounds. Uh, like th it, this is not intended as a creative tool, but you can use it as a creative tool. So we can listen to the residue and that can help us figure out if we're removing too much from our signal. I've been told that the masking parameter is also something that helps uh, get rid of the artifacts. However, honestly, even when you're listening to the residual signal, I can't really hear what the masking parameter is doing. I've, I've been reading up on it. I have no idea what it's doing. I don't hear any difference from it whatsoever. Uh, I don't know if that's a bug or I just can't hear it. Okay, so let's move on to the next sample I've prepared for you. This is about transients. So I've recorded a little bit of beatboxing. But what I also did is left a little bit of silence in front. However, I should have removed all of these extra little noises so that we have just the... I'm going to disable snapping. So we have just the noise and nothing else because, you know, every little click is going to make our noise profile less accurate. Let's listen to this. All right, you see we have this little weird bass tone in here. I think it's something to do with my mic stand. I might have just hit it accidentally and it just been resonating for this time. All right, let's me concatenate that 
and I'm going to teach this noise repellent plugin the noise profile. Let's remove this plugin so we have a clean slate. So this is our noise profile. Alright. Okay, let's add noise repellent. And here it is. So the first thing I'm gonna do is learn the new the noise profile. I'm gonna enable this and just play the signal so that it can build its uh, spectral profile. Okay, now I've disengaged that and it's now removing noise. Let's disable the plugin, bypass it, and I'm gonna play you what I've got recorded here. It's all beatbox sample. The thing is I recorded it like that. Far from the microphone. Now let's try and denoise this. Let's bump the reduction amount up to maximum and rise the thresholds, thresholds offset. The thing is with a long with long release times, what often happens is that the, the transients of the of the sound are getting softened up. Because the spectral gating is releasing so slowly that it that it's just attenuating the transients and adding a little bit of attack to the sound where it should be quick, slowing them down. But there's this transient protection parameter, which mm, Kind of short. I think it shortens the release when the plugin detects there is a there is a quick change in in, in loudness or a quick entry increase in loudness. Um, however, I can't like really get this plugin to uh, express this problem because uh, I think our noise sample is just too good. Let's record a bad bad noise sample and train it the plugin on it. So I'm gonna record now. Okay, so that's my bad noise sample. I'm gonna. Also normalize it so it's loud and like throws this noise repellent plugin even more. I should stress that the loudness of the noise sample we are analyzing in noise repellent is very important and kind of limits our options later down the road. Okay, let's play this. Yeah, so now our noise sample is completely screwed. Uh, the noise profile noise repellent is holding inside is really messed up. But that helps us highlight the problems that appear sometimes when you don't have ways to isolate the noise. Listen to what happens when I change the release time. Pretty much all the transients are smooshed out. Now if we increase the protect transients parameter... You can hear that it's trying to recover that. It's trying to like s cut the release times when it detects there's a transient. So the noise, the noise reduction is so insane right here and so like badly profiled that it, it's not managing to do it very well. We might actually have a better shot at this if we enable adaptive noise learn and just l let it run for a while. <laughs> Now let's disable it so that our noise profile stays the same. And let's listen. Pretty okay. Let's now get rid of this um, false nasty noise profile. I'm gonna reset our noise profile and learn it again from this thing. Try again. Okay, I think it, it's doing its job. There is this thing called residual whitening, and what it does is it like makes the residual signal sound like white noise. And I think it's like what it's doing is kind of like dithering. I'm, I'm doing this in air quotes because it's not dithering in the, sa in the sense that we're converting from like, you know, 24-bit audio samples to 16-bit audio samples and we want to get rid of the quantization noise by inserting very precise randomness. Um, this is something else, but it also is introducing randomness to break up the artifacts. 
And you can hear it's making this residual sound like white noise, actually. If we not disable the residual listen and... I think what we could do is make this much louder and train our noise profile on that. All right, now it should be much stronger. Yay! All right, I think that's uh, all the parameters. So now let's move on to the creative side of things, which I think might be interesting. So I'm gonna play to you what I've made. So, uh, what you've just heard is a synth patch that is being processed with noise repellent, but not for noise removal. So, without all the processing, it sounds like this. So that's an ACD bass thingy. But then, I have recorded a little noise sample. I've pushed it through noise repellent to teach it that sample so it creates a profile. And then I use it to process that exact synth patch. And I got something like that. Which I think is pretty interesting. And you can like really sculpt the sound if you just give it a different noise sample. To mask the artifacts and like uh, remove the feeling of a badly compressed audio file, added some reverb and some multiband compression and also some compression compress saturator bar air windows. And this is the final result. Now, without noise repellent, it sounds like that. Which is also a valid sound and it's an interesting patch. Now, let's see what we can do if we record something different for this noise source. <coughs> Let's enable noise repellent. Let's reset the noise profile and learn noise profile. <coughs> now let's play our little synth patch through that. It sounds different now. This is one way you can use this plugin creatively. The other way is to use the residual listen, which is it should give you only the things that it detected to be similar to the noise profile. So that's the wet signal, the processed denoise signal, and now without denoising. So uh, yeah, one thing that's worth noting is that the plugin, as I said in the beginning, it introduces latency and that's dependent on the sampler rate you're running the plugin on. I'm using 48 kilohertz sampling rate and it introduces 32 milliseconds of latency. So it's not suitable for recording through because you would have way too much latency, but it's it's okay if, you, if you're like do, using this for live streaming, for example, you can just you just need to delay your video accordingly uh, by 32 milliseconds and you can have your video and audio in sync with denoising being done live and actually i've been using it uh, a couple of times for live streaming with the adaptive noise learn on which is doing a pretty decent job at some time i had to be running this thing on in extreme settings because i had um, an ac unit in my room because it was so hot that I would not be able to conduct a live stream without that. So the whole live stream, the AC unit was running on full blast uh, in my room, doing this. And noise repellent, I just trained it on that sound and just cut it off nearly perfectly. Sure, it made my voice sound like a bad VoIP call, but it was still much better than 
so uh, yeah, that's the basic things for you. A very useful thing that was introduced to this plugin a while back, um, if you've been using it years ago, you might remember when it wasn't there, and it's that the plugin used to not remember the noise profile between saving and loading your session. So if I saved my project in Ardor, and I loaded it up, back up, I would have to relearn the noise profile, which was pretty annoying. And they also write that it was made for Ardor specifically, but it, in my experience, like it works okay in Carla and other hosts. I tried it, so it's not like it's a it's a badly written plugin that only works in Ardor. This is all I wanted to show you today. Don't forget to check out the Noise Repellent GitHub page. You can find lots of useful information about how to use it, how it's working, how to get best results, and hopefully you can also understand masking and hear uh, its effect. Um, <laughs> I can't. Um, yeah, there's lots of great info there. Uh, so that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something. Also, huge thanks to all the people who are supporting my work financially. Um, after the last video's release, the um, Ardor MIDI Masterclass, the Patreon support has exploded, and I'm extremely excited about that, because that means uh, me doing this full-time is getting closer and closer. Thank you. So, if you, dear viewer, would like to join these wonderful people who are making this possible, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa, where you can drop me a buck or two every month. Now go and denoy some noises. Or something. I don't know. By the way, this is the first video I'm recording using my new camera. It's a Lumix GH5. I got it used. Let's see how it stands. Let's see how it works. I'm not sure if the green screen lighting is correct. But the image should be good. Really good. Okay, I love you. Bye bye.